seventeen and all your dreams are knocking on your front door. I'm coming to you in the most vulnerable state of my life ever. Twenty-five, you realize that nothing is the same as before. I struggle with that boundary and I do struggle with saying no. Where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? All of those years. My kids deserve their mom sober and alive. How did we end up? How did we end up? How did we end up here? I am done. I am okay being by myself. Is it all, all, all a lie? Hi, beautiful people. I'm Rachel Severs, and you're listening to Consent to Treat. beautiful people, you are listening to Consent to Treat. I am Rachel Severs, life coach, counselor, and I always order the creme brulee 100% of the time. If it's on the menu, it's in my mouth. (laughs) Okay, today we are listening to a real live counseling session between me and Tracy, a married 33-year-old white female with a bachelor's in sociology. She's a mother of two small girls with tendencies towards hypochondria. And she smokes weed daily. This year, she moved out of her in-law's home and into a new home with her mother. And as we learned last season, she started working, which shifted a lot of things in her home life, in her relationships, and in her internal world. She originally came to me for therapy in 2015. We've tackled all sorts of issues, self-confidence, stress, anxiety, hypochondria, parenting, the meaning of life. This season, out of left field, she's ready for a divorce. She's had some eye-opening experiences ending in realizations about her relationship, and she's not happy. What's she going to do about it? For the sake of her privacy, we are keeping Tracy's real name and identifying information hidden. She's given us permission to record and publish this session. Please be aware, sessions with me always include mature language. And with that, hate it, love it learn something. Enjoy. Well, can we first start with how you look? Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Because you're a lot smaller than the last time I saw you. Yes. What has happened to you? It's been like a combination of things that I've just gotten lucky. But I think the biggest thing is, is that I have really cut sugar out and uh, just like not eating very much in general. Okay. Yeah. So how are you feeling physically now? Does it feel healthy to you? Yes. So I just feel healthier, like endurance wise, like dealing with my kids, like playing with them or um, throws very bad tantrums still. So like dealing with her pretty much almost every day, she like doesn't want to leave school. And so she's fighting and she's kicking. And it just like with that, like just battling my child from, you know, leaving school or like she just has intense tantrums where she does get a little violent from time to time. So dealing with her, like, and even my- uh, Dealing with her physically? Yeah. Or or your mood or your irritability, patience. Yeah. All of that's changing for you. Yeah. Definitely. Like I'm great getting more patience with her because I'm not so out of breath dealing with her or I'm not just in general. I think I was like overall super bad out of shape. Like mm. I never worked out and I always used to. And I just didn't after I had kids and then, um, but it's been a combo of stuff. Like I have to go to the chiropractor every week now, basically. Really? Yeah. Or uh, my form, like I'll mess up my arm, like I'll tweak something and I'll just like not be able to work out properly. So it's like a combination of like trying to keep things stable. And then now when I sub, I'll like go to PE with the kids or like I mess or I'm with them all the day, all day. But I'm also like eating a banana on the go. And that's also a big thing I've noticed about myself. I'm big into eating things that I can walk with, Mm. like fruit, bananas, jerky, like, (laughs) Uh you know, French fries, you know, anything like honestly, whatever I can get and keep going. That's what I'll do. Okay. But yeah, I remember doing that in college a lot. And now that I feel like I'm kind of back in my groove of like, not necessarily having to be home constantly with my kids and because you're working regularly now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This whole month I did not work though, because my kids were so sick. Oh, really? Yes. And they're very particular about preschool. So if they're like coughing, they'll call me and tell me to come get them. Oh, geez. 
Yes. It's so hard as a parent, right? Yes. <laughs> and so I'm like, so it's really bad when a sub has to call in a sub when you're already there, yeah, you know, so yeah. that can be difficult. So in the morning, I'm like waking them up, like, how are you? What do you <laughs> sound like? Are you congested? Whatever. I just, and they are so sticklers about it mm. big time and so I can't tell you how many times I've sent her and they'll call me within like the first hour and tell me to come get her wow and this whole month we were all sick I get sick being in the school now so it's definitely like a a cycle of like trying to maintain this like new chapter but this old chapter at the same time of like navigating working mom instead of stay at home mom but now I'm like literally in between and I just don't understand what do working moms, which I'm sure there are plenty of moms in my exact situations. What do you do with your kids when they are sick? Right. Because what if grandma is elderly and takes care of her, but she can't get sick herself? Correct. That's my reality. And so I do have a job, thankfully, that if I don't show up, my boss isn't going to be like, where are you? You know, mm -hmm. and I get to pick. But still with that job, I have still had to leave work and call in another sub for me because my child is sick. Right, right. It's insane. And I've been frustrated and been like, okay, well, I'm just not going to work then. But then I feel like that's too much swinging on the pendulum of like too mm -hmm. far back. But yeah, definitely just like navigating this new sick world and just like the, the state of my marriage. Because last time we had talked, mm -hmm. I basically had told you that I wanted him to leave at this point. Like mm -hmm. I was ready to just separate so within I think like that week I had told him and he I just felt like didn't take me serious oh, and yeah. yeah I was gonna say how how did yeah how did he take that uh, he just kind of brushed it off or what, what so do you mean? initially we were fighting about something and he made the comment I'm just tired and I said yeah me too and like we shouldn't be this tired and our problems that we're tired of have been the problems that before we were even married right like and now that you're a dad, I need you to be around more. I need you to be like in the moment. Like I don't want you sitting in the room with them on your phone or reading a book or doing any fucking thing else. But I want your eyes on them. And I want you to be actually cognitive of what they're doing. That is what like being present in the moment is. And I like broke it down with them. And I told him we need to go to counseling. Like, if we're going to survive, we have to go to counseling. And it was one ear and out the other. And I was like, okay, like, you know what? I said my piece. And so I would like you. You're not taking it seriously. I, I like, we, sh you should leave at this point. And he was like, no. He was like, if I leave, that's when I, we divorce. And I was like, okay, well, then you should leave. And, like, he kind of, like, just stopped. And he was like, you're ready to divorce at this point? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm ready to sign papers. These are the problems that have continuously been going on. And I wouldn't say we have like these, well, recently we have, but like this turbulent marriage, right? It's not a bad, violent, it's just an irritating marriage. I just want to be clear when you're talking about the problems that have persisted over time, you're talking about him really not being involved, not yes. tuned in, kind of doing his own thing just really not knowing what's going on with you, not knowing what's going on with the girls. Yes. Just not being connected. Yes. In. Yeah. And yeah. I, know, I know that you're such an independent woman that it took you a while to even kind of realize what was yeah. happening, right? Yeah. You know, you've just kind of carried everything and done everything. And it's just been coming to a head over the last couple of years. Yeah. I'd say over the last year, once we moved out of his parents' house and we got our own and like, I'm trying to do this. I, I want them to read for half an hour a day, but I'm the only one doing it. But then when he does it, I find him the books on the floor and he's on his phone. So then I would just pick up the book and start doing it because it needed to be done. But now I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Like that, I yell at him and I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Like I leave the room and it's like, oh, Mom's gone for everybody, so you're just going to do whatever, the bare minimum. And that's what I told him. I was like, if you're going to do the bare minimum, I don't need you to be around all the time. Like, they don't need you. They don't need a babysitter. Like, they need a father to, like, interact with them. And then so when I was telling him I wanted him to leave... He said, well, then I'm going to take them with me. And I just started busting up laughing. I was like, what are you going to feed them? What do they eat? And he kind of like looked at me and I was like, okay, um, how many mill milliliters uh, is allergy medicine? You know, just simple things, you know, that he has no idea that I do because I've just done it. And maybe it's partly m my deal that I've never 
said that I've done these things. But then once I do say I do these things, there's still no recognition. And then I think that's where the problem starts to, right. to you know. And then I think, like, I have so much animosity towards you for, like, the things that happened when I was in labor. And, like, you're so short-tempered. And Wait, then what, what happened when you were in labor? Remember, or, like, he just didn't think that I was in labor with my second one. Oh, that's right. Yes. So he made me wait. And then I was like contracting every minute. And I was like on the way to the hospital. And he was just like, I bet you you're not even in labor because he was technically on call. And I was just like, you are a fucking medical professional telling me who uh, who," because he just like didn't believe me that I was like in labor or I don't know how to explain it. And this is it is so bizarre to me. It is just like underlying I'm wrong. And that's what I told him. Like the duration of our marriage has been like, I'm just always wrong. Like no matter what it is, I'm just wrong about it. No matter or, what I ask for. Yeah. It's like not the right thing or it's not taken seriously. Yes. I'm not, my words aren't taken seriously. I'm not. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. heard. And then he would be like, it, it's just your anxiety or like, and I was like, dude, no, like this is like hurting really bad. And then so finally when they were a minute apart, my mom was like, okay, you need to go. You need to go. And yeah, I was like, six five or six at that point oh, centimeters wow. right wow so then and I was like a c-section because my first one was a c-section and I had to get my spinal I still had to do all this stuff so I was still like having contractions like while well, they were setting the IV, putting me in the OR like and it was so scary and I just remember being mad at him and being like I shouldn't be mad at this guy right now because like my child's entering the world and he didn't believe me he was because he was on call so he was trying to call his hospital to be like hey my wife's in labor like obviously they knew I was like 38 weeks pregnant at that point Mm -hmm. but then finally I had this like really like stern nurse and so he was like just on the phone and she finally said you need to stop and like pay attention to what's going on with her because she's freaking out right now and anybody that you're trying to contact is going to be okay with knowing like you're in medical we know so stop and pay attention to what's important right now he was like okay okay but he was like frantic so then I brought that up to him during this conversation when I told him I wanted to leave I was like don't you remember the nurse having to literally stop you and be like you need to stop because that's not important right now and I had said those words to you but because they came from me they weren't taken seriously they were not heard I think at that point Will started turning had you never talked to him about what an impact your birth story had on you. Is that the first time you guys talked about that? I honestly don't even know if I realized it until like two years ago. Oh. I just remember thinking like this isn't how it should be or whatever. But at the same time, I had a being, a new being to take care of 30 minutes later. But I remember the friction we had. She was in the NICU and then she came home and like he was so different with her versus the first child. And so I sat there and talked to him and I was like, you never woke up once with when she came home from NICU. And he was like, well, yeah, you were at home. And I was like, but I also had a 14 month old, right? Like I had very young children and it was a lot. If it was twins, it'd be like, you're in the same two diapers, but one was walking One was mobile, one could do everything and the other couldn't, right? Right. So it it was hard. It was so hard. And so... Pause with that for a second. The whole, but you were at home. Yeah. Because the reality is, is you had already a full-time job, more than a full-time job, right? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, job at home. Yes. Caring for your child. Mm Mm-hmm. But then this expectation of, oh, you're what, but you're at home. So you can take on another full-time job. Yes. Because you're at home. Exactly. But, but because I go to a 40 hour a week job outside of the home, somehow that makes it not my job. And I tell him like, you were a monster looking back. I didn't know how big of a dick he was. And then I had zero support system there when that's all you have and it's not to you, it's not that bad in the moment. So but then when you come home and 
you have other support systems and you see the different reactions to the things you say or that's when I kind of started catching on like he's kind of a dick (laughs) you know what I mean like wow he's that must be so interesting for you to look back at so I mean you guys have been together for so many years yeah 10 years how how did I live like this but never recognize what was going on for so many years I think I was straight up in survival mode and we've been living on our own. Well, like my mom's there, obviously, but like for the most part, not living with like his entire fucking family, there's not as much help. And he sees he has to do way more. And once he ruptured his Achilles, right, he was home all the time and he kind of got firsthand preview of things that how boring it is just being home all the time, like not being able to do anything. Mm. So it's like. He had this injury where he he wasn't necessarily bedridden, but he had to be home. And that's the same thing like having a newborn. Or you have to be home. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you need to go to Target. Oh, that fucking sucks. Like, you can't, like, do a pickup. Oh, but he couldn't drive. So, you know what I mean? It's just... And it was the first time he was ever in a in a situation like that. And then he was like, oh, wow. But I'll give him the points as to him being like, wow, like, I can't believe you did this. Like, I can't believe, like, I don't know how you did it. And now he'll say things like that. Like, I don't know how you did it. And I'm like, dude, I don't know either. And I was like, I guess it's because I had to, but that doesn't mean that it's like, I know I won't let myself get into any type of situation like that now. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm kind of like trying to prevent within our marriage now. Like I dealt with it and now I'm not. You dealt with what? Like doing everything. I dealt with kind of like being home all the time. And how do I explain it? Like just doing everything for him. Yeah. And now even with just working, I don't really have time to do as much as I did, whether it be like his scrubs being cleaned and like decently, but now he does it. So it's forced him to do things that he definitely wouldn't have had (laughs) to do, right? Because I've worked. But, you know, over the summer, I just felt like, really unhappy and so when I was telling him you know I'm unhappy and then finally I know he heard me because I went crazy one day we were at Costco and he made a comment about like me spending money and I just fucking I was like okay I'm done like I it was this was like three days after I asked him to leave right and he didn't want to leave and then I said if you want I can leave and go to my sister's and you can the girls can stay here and then like we can switch and do it that way and he said he wouldn't want to do it that way so I said okay fair enough and then he was like if you're being serious then yeah we'll go to counseling but I was like okay well you do it then you find the counselor because you are all you know and he's like we can't go to Rachel because like ethical right so because you know me Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be a fair counselor to him yes exactly (laughs) yeah so we found another guy but our insurance doesn't take it and he's pretty pricey so I'm telling him like okay it's like a divorce which is gonna be even more money or like this is the realistic situation that we're in so that was about a month and a half ago and at that point when we got into the fight at Costco we were fighting about money we were just fighting about everything And then I told him that I was so unhappy with him and that I was ready to walk. And I know that he's looking at me like because I felt like this was the first time he heard me. He was like looking at me like, oh, fuck, like you're going psych. Like I was being a psycho in the car. Like I was like, I am not doing any of the fucking shopping anymore. You're you're, you're so worried about money and like getting gifts and stuff. But and, and that is totally fine. But I just can't do that so you're gonna start doing all the shit that I do because I'm done doing it Mm -hmm. and then he said that he didn't know I felt like that and I was like that's such bullshit I have told you a million times and you know what is so sad that I know for a fact in your stupid fucking brain you're looking at me and saying oh this is the first time I like really have heard this from you and I'm gonna sit here and fucking tell you this is probably like the 17th time I've told you but this is the first time you're fucking paying attention isn't it and he was like I called him out on it I know the way he thinks I know his behavior and I'm like I am done I am okay being by myself and I know what I bring to the table the cliche I'm not afraid to walk away Mm -hmm. and so now that just like woke him up I don't know in a way he's done a lot of things that I've asked he's way more aware of things he helps me without me having to ask him for the help which has been pretty significant I'd say like if I'm flustered and I'm 
trying to get the girls ready for school and like myself ready for work. I don't need you to sit there and be like, what do you need me to do? Or just fucking do their hair, get their shoes on. I don't know. Do something. You know what I mean? Something that needs to be done. Yeah. And so like he's done that. But now he's doing everything I'm pretty much asking. But now I'm kind of like, I'm still royally annoyed with you. So Mm. I don't know Mm -hmm. if it's just done dead in the water, which is, again, why I'm like, we need to do this counseling thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. So have you guys started counseling? No, we have not. Okay. Yeah. So we're kind of like waiting to save. That experience is is really normal. Like after so many years of asking for what you want, when you finally get it, you'd think, and usually your partner's like, well, I'm giving it to you. Why are you so upset at me? (laughs) And you'd think that you would be happy or relieved. Great. I'm finally getting what I want. But it's really common for the opposite to happen to instead be really pissed oh my god that's that, where I... oh you see you are capable yes you could have been doing it the entire fucking time, time. see like <laughs> yes yeah you are capable of seeing when i need help you are capable of reading the room you are capable of doing all these things you do know what to do why didn't you do it this whole time? Yes. Yeah. So that's really typical. It's something that you can work. If you choose to work through it, you can get through it. Give yourself some grace there because that's that's normal. So I'm definitely like, well, if I'm still feeling this way or even worse, like, you know, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure I have like the annoyances that he's not here. And that's why I want to go to counseling. I'm ready for you to rip me apart. Like, tell me what I'm doing wrong yeah. too. Cause I'm sure a two sided road. Right. But just the fact that he knows that I'm ready to walk is just what changed him. Too bad. It had to get that far. That's I think another thing I don't want him to change behavior when I'm ready to walk, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, and that's, and I've also voiced that to him. Like, yeah. I don't want it to scream at you like a psycho in the parking lot to get you to hear me. Sure. Yeah. So, so overall, I mean, this can potentially be really stressful to be going through something like this. Yeah. In your marriage, it could be really liberating too. It could be fantastic. What, what have you noticed with your overall mood over the last month or two while this has been happening? What's, what's going on? Um, I definitely just have a, um, just overall annoyed with him. Um, Some days I'm okay. It's like things are fine. But overall, I'd say I'm short tempered. Mm. But now I think I'm a little bit more setting back in my ways. Because like, I think living with my mom is good, but it's also terrible. But she'll be like, "Eh, you know, you're kind of being ridiculous. It's just not that big of a deal. But now I know he will say that to me and I will be like, Oh, you cannot say that to me. What what happens to you right there? Can you can you feel that? Yes, that is like straight. Like I'm going to rip you apart for saying that to me because everything is a big deal right now. (laughs) (laughs) You better act like it at least. And so it almost looked like everything just like got pulled into your spine almost when you said that. Because it's not a big deal. Oh, yes. Because what It, it is a big deal. Yes. And it's not up to you to decide what's a big deal to me and what's not. Yes. Right? Exactly. How wonderful would it be if the response was, honey, tell me why this is a big deal to you. I'm interested. Yes. It just instantly I was like, okay, well, we're right back at square one. And I'm very open at my facial expressions and I'm very honest and I feel like I'm pretty real with him and I'll roll my eyes and you know, and so I don't hide or try to sugarcoat anything with him. Like, I need him to know where I am. How is rolling your eyes being straight with him? I think that's the way I th- to call him an idiot without calling him an idiot. <laughs> okay. Like, ugh. <laughs> is that the the eye rolling and the being quote unquote straightforward or <laughs> You're just a bitch to him, I guess? That hasn't been your way of being all along? This is new? No, I guess I have. But I think it's a little more often. Like every once in a while, I'd be like, okay, don't. Like maybe it was a, like an honest mistake. But now I'm just like, oh God, come on. Like he's been working nights, so he'll take a nap during the day. And I was crying with him. And he wanted her to take a nap with him. And she was tired. And I'm like, why is she crying? Why is she crying? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. She had pooped. And it was in her diaper. And mm. I was like, she's uncomfortable. Like, bro, come the fuck on. 
like we're in the middle of like potty training her right now mm. so but i'm just like she has been around for three goddamn years like three and a half years like you should know that this is what's gonna happen with her and like come on like i'm, I'm telling him like this is no more like i have zero tolerance on this type shit now mm. like get it together mm. and now he'll say things like oh i can't do anything right or and i'm like well maybe you can't <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I am with it. Like, that's honestly how I'm like. And he'll say, oh, you, you can be super controlling. And I'm like, maybe I am controlling, but maybe we should go to counseling so he can tell me why I'm controlling because I also don't listen to him at this point. Yeah. Like, he's always heard me in some aspects of big time things. But as far as like the minute little everyday tasks that he's never helped with, it's like built up over time. Of like me just handling everything, me being so flustered and me not also asking for help because I don't think he can do it. And then once I do ask for help, he doesn't do it right. I get even more annoyed with it. Right. Mm. Like the diaper thing. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm like, OK, ugh, just I don't know. What would be your greatest hope here that you guys would be able to work things out, that you would be able to go your separate ways? What what are you hoping for today anyways? At this point, uh, I would say maybe go our separate ways mm -hmm. because I just am annoyed with him on a day to day. And I know he's doing everything and he's his attitudes change completely. Like he's a lot nicer, capable, I guess you could say now. But I just don't know. Like, are you having a hard time imagining what he could possibly do to repair everything? Yeah. yeah. I just don't think he can. Yeah. And I don't... So you, you don't see hope here. Yes. Yeah. So, and like, I'm not going to say that maybe there's a miracle that can happen, but yeah, we need to go. We need to talk to somebody. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Regardless if you go your separate ways or not, it can't hurt for you guys to learn how to talk to each other better. Yeah. How to respect one another. How to mm -hmm. work better as a team. Yeah. Because you're going to be a team for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> And I wonder that if we went our separate ways, I wonder if my temperament with him would be better. Of course, because so. you wouldn't be faced with the day to day annoyances. Yeah. Which I think is what's wearing you down right now. Yeah. Like I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he he's working 10 times more because I told him I had a problem with that. So he's literally doing everything. I'm asking everything. Mm -hmm. I heard once that every couple who makes it forever, they get divorced at least twice in their life. And some actually, you know, fill out the paperwork and get the actual legal divorce. Yeah. But what the person actually meant was there's like a restart at least twice okay. in their lifetime. And I think that if you and your husband were to make it through this and last a lifetime, it would be because you guys would get divorced. And that means divorcing the old marriage. Okay. The old way of being, the old way of behaving, the old way of communicating and having a complete restart. Like oh. as if you're two new people, which you are, you're completely yes. different people than when you got married. Very true. So you would have to come back together with the agreement of, okay, we're going to establish how do we communicate now? How do we work together now? How do we spend our days? How do we spend our alone time? How do we do life? Brand new. Everything's brand new. I like that. Yeah. Get a divorce. Yeah. Whether it's an actual legal one or not. Divorce all that shit. Yeah. Maybe your new relationship is separate. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all okay. But whatever it is, the old the old way needs to get divorced. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to call you on your shit. It's not okay to be rolling your eyes and calling your husband stupid. I mean, you're yeah. not going to get what you want from him as long as you're doing that. Exactly. But I also want to honor the fact that you're so worn down for so many years of being overlooked, overloaded, unappreciated, that of course this is where you're at. Yeah. Of course it is. And it's not going to be effective. <laughs> yeah, I know. I you know. know. I know it. And so it's like, why do I still do it if I know that I'm being <laughs> ridiculous? It's probably my sassiness. It's just one of my flaws. <laughs> one of my real life flaws that I just can't get over. And like, he does tell me that. He's like, you can just be a sassy bitch sometimes. Uh -huh. Like, but... And this is where we miscommunicate. I'm genuinely not being one. I'm just super surprised. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even being mean. Like, I'm genuinely like, what the fuck? Like, not like, 
bad what the fuck but good you know maybe I need to word it better I don't know but that's when I'm like you just assume I'm a bitch all the time so that's why you think that Uh I'm just like being a bitch but it's very interesting that you say the divorce thing because there's a new dynamic that we're dealing with that he's actually being okay with I have created very solid boundaries with his mother Mm -hmm. and I have enforced them and I think she's finally picked up on it but it finally like came to a head. Like I feel like when you kind of like put your foot down about something, there'll be like a couple times they try and try. And then Mm -hmm. the one time they get really mad about it, you're going to break or they're going to break or something's going to happen. You You are spot on with that. Right. Okay. Yep. And this is just from my real life experience of doing it. But it was about he has family in Guatemala. And when they come, we do a lot with them because they do a lot and they have money. So it's like they don't come to visit. They want to come and like go to Vegas. They want to come and like, travel to the mountains and like Mm. they want to come for the experiences right so one of his family members showed up last minute two days notice and we had our fall family pictures planned and anyone that does that shit knows how fucking terrible it is that's probably the last time i'll ever do it It is the first and the last time i will never have family pictures taken again Uh and his mom expected us to like cancel everything that day and hang out with them (laughs) and i was like no And she was very upset. She was texting me. I could tell she was upset. And I looked at his phone. This was at 3.30 in the afternoon, right? And sure enough, at like 3.35, his mom had texted him, call me when you get this. So one, that to me tells me that she has no respect for what I have to say. She's going to go around Mm -hmm. and go to him. So I said, hey, did you call your mom? And he said, oh, no, but I saw that she texted me to call her, but I just haven't called her yet. I was going to do it after the shower. And so I told him what had happened. And I was like, they want to have this fucking barbecue and they want us not to do anything. And he was like, "Okay, well, I'll just tell her no. And then he just like walked away from me. Like, it was just so nonchalantly like, no, I'm just going to tell her no, that's fine. She can be mad. I just don't care. And so I think that was a reality check for me. Like, maybe I'm making the bigger deal out of it, of pushing the boundary until (laughs) there was clearly a fight about it the day it happened we ended pictures like an hour early or something it was just a shit show and so when I went over there she like wasn't talking to me Mm. she wouldn't say anything Mm. and then when we got home I was like that's what I'm talking about like your mom's mad because what I wouldn't cancel the pictures today and he was like yeah you're right and so it was a prime example he saw it and so I told I was like, why is it such an issue when I do anything? Like your family also thinks that my ass should be at home and I should do anything that comes my way, right? Mm -hmm. I said, and I'm not going to. And this is like, this is this example I'm telling you about right now. I just had this like assumption that he would always choose his family over me and not that I would ever put him in that situation. I would just walk away. He was like, why does this matter to you? And I said, because I have a feeling that one day your mom's going to be like poison your mind about me or anything. He was like, oh, I would always just choose you. I wouldn't even wouldn't even think about it. And I was like, what? And Mm. he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you're the mother of my children. And like, that's my mom. Yeah, I love her. But like, no, I have to like. You're right. We like need to separate it. And so like we've not been going over there. And if he goes, I don't go. Is this after your tantrum in the Costco parking lot? Okay. So this is like the more woke version of him responding to a situation. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Your face kind of looks like surprised as you're telling this story. (laughs) I mean, I was absolutely shocked when he said that. I was like, what? But I think he also sees as he gets older how her behavior is with his younger brothers and it's not healthy she's Mm. very controlling and doesn't want them to leave and says oh you'll hurt me if you leave like if you move out and they're like 27 wow so i'm like dude come on like his brother wants to leave so bad he wants to have fucking girls come over and do whatever the fuck he wants without having his mom know about it yeah and i i don't say anything to her but i do like point things out to like that is not okay Mm. his mom has just always put her foot down like hardcore mama's boys wow yeah wow he's also respecting the boundary that i have for his mother fantastic if he does go it's not oh i'm going would you like to come not we're going and or we have to go or this is going on it's like hey this is going on 
um, do you want to keep one of the girls? Do you want me to take both the girls? Do you not want any of the girls? It's kind of like asking me what I want, which I appreciate because sometimes I don't want them to go over there. Mm -hmm. So surprisingly good in the aspect of his family, which I thought would never be. You know, when you look at the dynamics of his family, it makes sense that on a subconscious level sort of makes assumptions about what a family supposed to look like. Yes. And the role of the woman in the family. Yes. And, um, he's really if he's going to do this, he's really going to have to relearn a lot yes. about the kind of relationship that's going to actually work between the two of you. Yes. A partnership, equality. Yes. Both people stepping up, both people having a say. Yes. <laughs> Independence, connection, all that stuff. It's going to be very different from what he's Seen. grown up with. Yeah. You have... I don't want to sound dramatic about it, but like energy suckers right now, you know, like going through the relationship stuff, going through, you know, trying to figure stuff out within yourself, yeah. you know, with your husband and with your husband figuring yeah. stuff out and all that. And, you know, I know there's some challenges with your kids and their yeah. behaviors and stuff. You have a lot pulling your energy and I know that your friendships are nourishing for you and working is, you know, usually nourishing for you. Mm -hmm. Just you mentioning earlier that you're generally just more irritable, yeah. you know, and your patience is lacking. And it just, it makes so much sense because you do have so much pulling from you. Yes. Patience requires your energy tanks to be full. Yes. You know? Uh. Because then you can think through things, you can pause when you need to, you can kind of be on top of things, you know, that takes energy, all of that. Yeah. And when you have all these people in situations that are like pulling your energy, yes. pulling your energy it makes sense that your patience just isn't going to be there, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm glad to hear that physically you're feeling better. You are keeping up with the work thing, mm -hmm. all the things that you can think of that just nourish you and yeah. give you energy return to that okay keep returning to that you're going through a tough season yeah i know you'll be great you know yeah you'll figure it out whatever you and your husband decide to do you'll be okay yeah both of you yeah you know and i think that's a big thing as to why i'm able to navigate it as okay as i am just because i've gone to therapy for so long and i remember being like i'm scared to get a divorce like one of the first things i remember like talking to you about was i'm scared to have like a failed marriage or i get so much anxiety from breakups how would I do it with a marriage and stuff and so I feel like I'm able to navigate it a lot better because of all the things that I think but I think one of the greatest things I think is the end result is I know I'm gonna be okay absolutely so it's not as scary I mean yeah it's still scary but it's not it's not the end of the world yes yes it's not doomsday right like I figured it would be so yeah you made a really good point too. It's it's not like there's hitting and violence yeah. and, you know, like really abusive situations happening between the two of you. It's, Where it's like a parent, you should not be together or like there needs to be a, right, an ending. Right. And this is more insidious, right? It creeps up on you because yes. it's quieter and it looks prettier. Yes. <laughs> so it's harder to tell that there actually is some neglect happening here and there is some really harmful things happening. But the level of what's happening and the level of character and and generally the the friendship and love between the two of you uh -huh. you know you you guys have enough of it to where i know you'll be able to work through this and be good on the other side of it yeah you know like we'll be fine separated co-parenting i think we'll be okay uh -huh. yes and yes together i think we'll be okay but we both know what boat we're in yes so absolutely good for you good for you for speaking up Yes. You started seeing a problem and you didn't wait too long to say, nope. Yes. This is a problem I will not tolerate it anymore. Yes. Okay. So maybe you didn't see it for a real long time, but as soon as you started seeing it, you started acting on it. Yes. You know, and I'm super proud of you for that because you could have just stayed quiet for the next 10 years. Yeah. And, I and just... neither one of you deserve that. No, exactly. The fact that I still kind of want to stay, I guess, tells me something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, yeah, I'm literally just, like, navigating these waters. I know I'm not going to have a decision by next week. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just feeling. One day at a time. Yep. And every day, allow your answer to be different. The yeah. answer to, how am I feeling about it today? Yeah. You and know? It, it and varies. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's great today. I love it. And tomorrow it might be, I, I want out. I'm, I'm ready to run down the street. 
yeah. right now and just allow those answers to build up over time. Okay. One yeah. day at a time. Okay. Yes. I'm definitely in this channel like. <sighs> yep. Purgatory. Yes. I'm purgatory <laughs> right now. It's so uncomfortable. I know. You're doing a good job. But yes. All okay. Right. Thank well, you. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? And where have I been? Who am I now? Who am I now? Who am I now? And who was I then? And is it all, oh, all a lie? And is it all, oh, all a lie? Okay, so that is the first time we've heard from Tracy this season. Dun, dun, dun. We didn't really see this coming because most of what we heard from Tracy is, oh, I've got my husband, got my kids, got my job, doing life. And dissatisfaction in her marriage has never really been the thing. It's never really been the topic. It's always been like, yeah, we're, you know, we're good. We're good. And only recently has she been bringing to the forefront, oh, I'm, I'm pretty unhappy. I'm, I'm finding myself annoyed. I'm like angry all the time at him. I think it's really interesting that she could go for so many years not realizing what was not being given to her that she actually needed. The last time I met with Tracy in the office, it was really for guidance through a divorce because her mind was made up. I'm done. There's no hope here. He's not hearing me. This isn't going anywhere. And I'm miserable. We've heard from her on this podcast just how overwhelmed she is with all the duties that have been put on her shoulders. And that really caught up to her. And I think what happened is she realized the role that he was playing in not relieving her of any of those duties. Moving to this new house made things a lot clearer to her just how much help he was not giving her. I think it's because her mom doesn't give her the help that his family did. So listeners only get to hear one session out of many. You know, for instance, when you hear one session from Olivia, you're hearing one of like 50 sessions in a year. When you're hearing a session from Tracy, you're hearing one of maybe 10. She doesn't come in frequently. She used to be a weekly, biweekly client. You know, she would never miss. She came in very regularly. She was doing a ton of healing, working through things specifically around anxiety and hypochondria and things like that. Well, she grew so much that at this point, she has her toolbox. It's full. She knows how to use it. She really comes in when there's something big that she feels like she needs to work through. It's something that she doesn't feel completely equipped to deal with. So in between season two and season three, I've seen her twice. And that's it. And it's because she realized my marriage is not doing what it needs to do for me. In fact, it's making things worse for me. And for that, she's come for some guidance and help to navigate through that really difficult place of, yeah, I love this person. We got a long history together. And there are some things that are good. But man, am I just annoyed and pissed off every single day at this person? And is it really bringing value to my life and to my kid's life to be here? That's such a hard place to be in. And I know it's a place that so many people are in, not just women, men too. I love how frank she is about things. You know, she's just really not afraid to say, yeah, I'm just pissed. I'm pissed at him every day. <laughs> she's lost all that guilt stuff which I love because it allows her to really be able to just throw it out there on the table and do something with it. Okay. I'm annoyed with him every single day. What am I going to do with this? She's not hiding it. She's not sugarcoating it. I mean, how many times have I talked about guilt and how it's not only useless most of the time, but it actually gets in the way of processing through things, healing through things, you know, making good decisions about things. It clouds the situation. I feel so guilty saying that I'm annoyed and angry with my husband every day. Well, it doesn't change the fact that you're annoyed and angry with him. And what are you going to do with that? We're going to talk to him about it. We're going to go to counseling. We're going to divorce him. Like what move are you going to make? You can't, as, as long as you're so guilty that you can't even talk about it, you're not moving forward. You can't work on it. So you can tell guilt, get the fuck out, put it outside the door, shut the door and get down to what's real. I'm annoyed and I'm angry. What am I going to do with this? 
And for her, the answer right now is, I'm going to stay put, taking it for what it is today. I'm going to see where it goes. Today, it feels like we're going to separate for good. We might not. That's, that's where she's at today with it. I have to say that I'm inspired by her because I've been in that position before. Boy, can I relate. Oof. I was very much raised to you cook the dinner, you serve the dinner, the man gets up from the table, you clean his plate, then you serve him dessert before he goes to bed, you keep the house nice. This is the woman's job. I grew up in a house where my mom was both the breadwinner and was in charge of everything going on in the house. Well, and she put me in charge of a lot of it too. But I grew up with that idea. And so I naturally inserted myself into that role in my first two marriages. And I would just be so angry all the time, constantly just fuming. And it wasn't really even my spouse's fault. I mean... They just didn't care to clean up after themselves. They didn't care to do their laundry. They didn't care if the sink had spots on it. You know, they just they didn't care about that stuff. And I'm going behind them doing everything and picking up everything and cleaning everything and taking care of everything and I'm pissed at them about it. I get that. I have a lot of resentment to society, to, you know, the church, to my parents, you know, all that stuff. And I've worked through a lot of that. But man, this is a common issue with women, especially. I've had a few male clients who have felt very much like this, like, man, I have to cook, I have to clean, I have to do the grocery shopping, and I'm the one working, and I'm the one taking care of everything. People end up in these roles, and then there's no space in there to live. Now, I also want to honor the fact that for some people, this is living. For some people, it's so nourishing and and satisfying to be the one that's keeping the house and caring for the children and serving the food and making sure that everything is running. For some people, that is their calling and it's what they're drawn to and it makes them feel wonderful. And it's like, yes, that's you. Beautiful. But if it's not you and you're getting sucked into that role, it's deflating I just imagine like a balloon with the air. You're just a shriveled up <laughs> little balloon with just a little bit of air in it left. At the end of the day, you just, there's nothing, there's nothing left if you're spending your day doing a bunch of shit that you don't even feel like doing. Anywho, I can definitely relate. I know a lot of people out there can relate. What is so clinically significant to me about this session is the number of years that she went without even realizing what was happening. How many roles have we been pulled into without even knowing it? How many roles are you playing right now without even realizing it? We are taught in so many ways. I I mean, even if we have the best caregivers in the world, they teach us to be a certain way or to be a certain thing, to make a certain amount of money, to have a certain label, whether it's wife or husband or CEO or dentist or typical male, typical female, there's all these roles that we fall into and just fulfill them because subconsciously that that's just what you do. If we examined this, would we be satisfied with the roles that we are playing? Gosh, she's been with him for 10 years and nine of those years, she was fulfilling the role of the dutiful wife the doting mother, and all the stuff that goes along with that. I believe that moving out of her in-law's house where she got a lot of support and her husband was getting a lot of support. Her husband had a big village around him, kind of moving on their own. Her mother minds her own business a little bit more. So it's more just sort of the two of them taking care of their girls now. In conjunction with her going out into the world and starting to work and getting really passionate about other things other than just her home and her children. I believe that those two things really made her realize, wow, okay, I do so much and there's so much more I want to do. I really need support here. I lost my support. This is the person who should be giving me my support and he's not. This element of confidence that's been growing in her too puts her in a place where she's able to say, I deserve more. It's okay for me to ask something of you rather than, oh, that's just the way it is. 
grumbling under her breath about it, you know, and her little, she calls it her sassy attitude, her little passive aggressive sassiness. (laughs) Understanding the family of origin of your mate is super important, especially when it comes to roles. For me, this session is all about roles. What roles do we play? When you look at his family of origin, you see the female really is the sun that all the planets just orbit around. She kind of calls the shots emotionally. She's got people tied in. She's got people locked in. So his mom, she calls the shots about this is what we do. This is how we act. This is how we behave. This is where you're going to live. She's the shot caller and the men just kind of orbit around her. They, I'm sure, wouldn't say that. But that really is the dynamic there. And so, of course, Tracy's husband, on a subconscious level, right, he's just going to believe that she's the son. She's going to call the shots. We just kind of sit back and just orbit around her while she's doing everything. He's not considering himself a son as well. Like both of them need to be shining in the relationship. When it comes to roles, if this is something that a person is interested in, in figuring out for themselves you know, start asking yourself, what labels do I have? What roles am I playing in my life? And did I choose to play those roles? Understanding that you get to create any role that you play in your life. And they can change over time. And you can take a look at the people in your life. What roles are they playing? You know, like what role is my partner as a stepdad? to my children. You know, what, what does that role mean in our family? What role does a child have in our household? How much do they participate in, in chores? How much do they participate in conversations? Like you get to define all roles in your life. You get to make those descriptions, but any role that you've just sort of slipped into accidentally, I think it's worth taking a look at that and asking yourself, am am I happy here? Sometimes you'll accidentally slip into a role and you'll really like it and it'll really fit for you. But if you're not happy there, you get to change it. So raise your hand if you've ever had resentment against your partner. (laughs) Everyone raises their hand, including me. Resentment will eat away at your relationship in a very quiet, insidious way. We want to avoid resentment more than anything in our relationships. It's really evident with Tracy that resentment has taken a huge toll. You know, it's years and years and years of being angry and annoyed. So that's why she's at a place now where she can't even imagine him doing enough or being different enough or, you know, she can't even picture the resentment not being there because it's just built up for so long. Now, it is possible. Really, the only way to heal it is changed behavior that she can really trust. If he becomes more participatory and present and respectful of her for a long period of time, and she genuinely begins to trust that it's going to last and that it's coming from a true place, then the resentments will begin to heal. There's really no other way to heal that stuff. But that's what's going to have to happen over a long period of time for them to make it together as a married couple. At this point, he's doing all the things, but she's, she's not trusting where it's coming from and she can't trust that it's going to last. You know, so it's not healing yet. It's more infuriating at this point, which is really natural. All of my conversations about boundaries, 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 you know, I might sound like a broken record and it might be even kind of annoying to my clients that I'm always talking about boundaries, but this is why. Because if she had had great boundaries from the beginning, you know, that I expect you to participate in parenting, I absolutely need you to be present, I have to have that phone put away during dinner time. Like if she had had those boundaries in place, she wouldn't be at a place where she's resenting him at this point. But because it was just left unchecked all this time, now she has seven years of resentment to heal from, which I, it happens to all of us. Come on, like none of us are perfect. We can't be, we can't set all the boundaries perfectly for in every single relation. You know, it's normal, but they've got some work to do if it's going to work out. So my tip for the day, I'm not, I'm not going to go back over the whole boundary thing. I have a lot out there about boundaries. (laughs) My tip for the day is you have a right to change your mind. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that 10 years into it, if you realize you have a boundary, it's okay. It's okay to change things up. And in fact, we should be revisiting where we're at 
all the time. So maybe my boundaries were over here five years ago. And then three years ago, they shifted a little bit. And then last month, they just shifted again. And I'm going to move them and I'm going to keep moving them. So I don't ever have resentment against you. It's okay. I don't know if you've ever heard a woman has a right to change her mind. Well, it's kind of a cheerleading statement for if you go home with a man and at the last minute you decide, oh, I really don't want to do this with you. You have a right to change your mind. It's okay. It's okay. You always have a right to change your mind because oftentimes the argument will be, well, you didn't care about this before, or you already said yes. You already said I could do this. What's changed? You're being a hypocrite. <laughs> you know, there's like all sorts of arguments, right? When someone wants to say no, or I need, it doesn't matter. You have a right to change your mind. You have a right to change your boundary. Your wants and needs are going to shift over time. That's okay. My tip for the day is actually <laughs> something different. Is that okay? You just changed your mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm changing my mind about the tip for the day and I, that's okay. Yes. Elodie, is that, is that okay? I approve. Elodie approves. So here's your actual tip for the day. Many times uh, a client will ask me, should I tell my partner this? Should I tell my partner what I'm thinking? Should I tell my partner that I'm about to leave them? Should I tell them that if they don't give me what I want, I'm out the door? And my answer is always, yes, yes. That's your partner. They deserve to know what's going on in your head. They deserve the chance to make it right with you. Now, the problem here is that it's often misunderstood and taken as an ultimatum. So you're telling me if I don't do X, Y, and Z, you're just going to leave me. Thanks for the ultimatum. Okay. Understand that, yes, it may be mistaken when you tell your partner, if you don't do X, Y, and Z, I will be leaving next month. It's okay if it's mistaken. <laughs> it's okay if they think you're giving them an ultimatum. The reality is it's not coming from a place of an ultimatum. It's coming from a place of you need to know what's happening in me. You need to know where my limits are at because I want to give you the opportunity to make changes if you want. Okay. You're not demanding this person makes changes. You're not threatening them with like the threat to leave. That's not what's happening. It's this is what's going on in me. This is what I need. And if I don't get it, this is what I'm going to have to do for myself. This is not an ultimatum. How the other person takes it is not your responsibility. And being afraid of how the other person is going to take it shouldn't keep you from doing it. All right? All right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right. I think that's it for today. To all you beautiful people out there who are in the same place as Tracy, my heart goes out to you. It's a tough place to be in. And this is also the place where many marriages shift and become fantastic. Unfortunately, relationships have to kind of fall apart sometimes so that you can rebuild them into something way better. Now, is it a guarantee that it's going to be rebuilt? No, but this is what's needed for relationships to grow. It's tough. It's scary. You have to be brave to put yourself out there and do what she's doing right now. Super proud of her. I'm proud of all you people who are out there. I'm cheering for you. So today has been a lot about roles and a lot about boundaries. And if you're interested in learning more about boundaries, I have a ton on my social media. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's Rachel Mary Jane Sievers. Instagram and TikTok, Rachel Sievers, MS. Thank you so much for listening, beautiful people. This has been Consent to Treat. From Rachel Sievers and Elodie. <laughs> Thank you for listening and supporting beautiful people. Goodbye. Goodbye.